I'll probably be that. Just start. Green, right? Yeah. All right, I think it's about time. Um, so welcome everyone uh, to how Salesforce ensures quality of their releases by running a hammer test session. Uh, my name is Vladimir, I'm a product manager at Salesforce. Uh, you might know me by my famous Salesforce pants that I'm not wearing today, and as also as a product manager for custom metadata types. And today with me is uh, Ramu, he's engineering manager. Uh, at Salesforce, uh, who is in charge of Hammer, that we're going to talk just in, a, in about a few seconds. Before that, uh, as always, I would like to remind everyone about forward-looking statement. And uh, as you all know the drill, I'm sure it's not your first session today, even if it's your first Trailhead DX maybe. Uh, do not make any purchasing decisions based on any features that are not yet available. Uh, and we're going to talk about some features that are currently in pilot, and they're not available. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, with that, I'm, I'm transferring to Ramu, who is going to talk about some cool stuff. All right. Uh, just some numbers here. Oh, back. Um, we have more than about 200,000 active production customer orgs that are running, about 186 million Apex tests that our customers have written on our system. Again, only in production. I'm not speaking about customer sandboxes. Just in production, 186 million, and about 850 million lines of Apex code. That's how much of customization that has happened on Salesforce platform. Now, how do we, as Salesforce as a company, make sure we don't break any of these customizations when we release new major releases, right? Three times a year. That's the whole idea. Now, that's the product that we've been running for a while, and this is the first time we're publicly speaking about it. Um, we have an entire process called a hammer. The whole idea is it's an A-B testing. Whatever was working, customizations that are built by our customers should continue to function exactly the same way once the new major release goes out. That's the idea, right? So how do we do that? Um, we actually leverage the tests that our customers have written, the packages that our partners have developed, and then we have many types of hammer, two most important ones. First, the Apex. We run the entire suite of 186 million tests once in production code line, keep all the data of the test results and passes and failures, run it with the new Salesforce version one more time, 186 million. Each time we have roughly about 40 to 50 million failures each time, right? And then we analyze these failures. Every test that was passing the first time should pass this next time. Every test that was failing for reason X should fail for the same reason X the next time. If there is any anomaly, that's a bug on our end. We gotta go fix it, right? How do we do this? Before we go that, one more thing, package hammer. Our partners have written lots and lots of packages. We pick every package that has X number of subscribers. We make sure that those subscriber orgs can be upgraded to the latest version of that package once in the current production code line, one more time in the next Salesforce version. Any anomaly in the upgrade process, we gotta go back and fix, right? Now, going further a little bit, when do we do this? We have an actually entire release cycle here. A lot of that you can see, you know, we begin with when do we freeze our code? When do we run our hammer? When do we fix all the bugs? All this happens before the sandbox release that happens. 5.3 here, right? So much before all this time, between the features when the code is ready and between when the release freeze, that's when we run the hammer, we run all these tests, we analyze them, we fix the bugs, we ship the code on date, right? Now, this is where the important portion happens. 186 million tests when we ran, 46 million failures which were analyzed. We found eight bugs. This was just the summer release that we're already getting ready to ship. Eight bugs, all eight have been fixed before the sandbox release that goes out. We take a day to execute 186 million tests. We take one day to analyze them all. Our team has built a lot of good machine learning tools. We go through these failures, we cluster them, we have prediction scores, we look at what can be reproduced, what cannot be reproduced, what's a data-specific test, and we bug them. 
and all our developers in platform have about two weeks to fix it. We give them reproducers, and then these bugs are fixed before it's shipped out. That's the whole idea. But I kind of want to also call out a couple of things. All these Salesforce te uh, tests are actually executed in the Salesforce secure environment. We don't make copy of this, uh, the customer code or customer data. And none of us get to actually look at these tests and test results and failures. They're all analyzed by machines. All we get to see is a certain failure in our code with a stack trace as to what's not happening. And then we actually go one more step further. After we fix all these bugs, we go and publish this data back to the customer org in the setup tree. We tell them, hey, we ran hammer on your org. We ran these tests. These tests failed. This is how many bugs we found and we fixed. We published this back to the customer as part of the trust. So this is all the hammer process here. And we want to go one step ahead. We want to introduce this process to all our ISVs. We want to give this as a product. And I know Vlad here is going to talk more about that product here. Yeah, and while like eight bucks might not seem as a big number at first, you should understand those eight bucks might affect hundreds of customers once we go live. And uh, with critical stuff that you build, it, it, it's extremely important for us, for us to continue this exercise. And today, uh, or actually, I should say, at this release coming out, we're happy to introduce a pilot for a new feature that we called ISV Hammer. So, a long time ago when Salesforce just started, uh, 20 years ago, the concept was pretty simple. We have our platform, we have Salesforce apps that Salesforce builds for you, we have ISVs building apps for you, and we have your IT department building more apps. So the picture was pretty simple. Uh, over the years, as ISVs grown up, uh, their business, as, as, as customers grown up their orgs as well, we start seeing things more like this, where we have our platform, and we also have ISV platforms. So big ISV companies build their own solutions that include multiple packages for, fi for financial solutions, maybe for healthcare, for HR, and they're building their apps on top of their own platform. That is built on top of our platform. That's what we call the platform on the platform. So it became extremely critical for them to ensure the quality of the products that they release. Because as much as customers depend on Salesforce, they start depending on those solutions that partners provide to them. And that's, with that in mind, we decided to take what we have built for, uh, for our hammer over the years and offer it to ISV partners as well. So what is ISV Hammer? So ISV Hammer is a new feature that we're offering to, to the partners today that would allow them to uh, validate their package upgrades before going actually live on a copy of a customer org. So just like we do our hammer test to make sure that our release would go smoothly and without as, as much as possible without any new regression and bugs introduced, we want to give the same tool to the partner's hand. So the tool would, would let them test their package upgrades and make sure if there's anything failing, they know before the official release rolls out to hundreds and maybe thousands of their subscribers. Um, what, what happens behind the, behind the scene, right? So we have an ISV org where they can initiate the, uh, the test. And they want to test something on a couple of their subscribers. So what we do in, in behind the scene, we create we create a copy of those subscriber org and we put them into a secure, isolated environment which no one has an access into, including the ISV, so they cannot log in and see any of your stuff if you're a subscriber. And we allow them to do perform a sort of push upgrade. Same way you, they can perform a push upgrade on your environment today, they can perform the push upgrade on the test environment and receive the results back knowing that if they're about to push that upgrade to you today, that upgrade is going to succeed or fail. And if it's failed, they would know upfront about it so they can reach out to you and maybe do some investigation and make sure that everything will go smoothly once, release, one, once they are ready to release uh, their product. And uh, as I mentioned, it's completely secure, isolated environment that we have full control of. So what, what it would allow to do, just to recap a little bit more. Uh, first of all, yes, it will allow you to allow ISVs to test their package upgrades and installs. It will also allow you to test their packages in between major Salesforce versions. If, as we're rolling out a summer release right now, they would be able to test it before the, it hits the production of their subscribers. They will be able to tell, yes, our package would still work with whatever Salesforce is doing in summer 19. 
It also allows them to execute certain Apex tests as part of their package upgrade, so they can do some post-install testing and some smoke validation testing. So uh, it all works through CLI. Uh, some of you already probably know SF SFDX CLI is the main thing these days, especially at the event as, such as Trailhead DX. Uh, there are three main commands that we're offering in Pilot today. Uh, one to run the test, one to see results of the test, and one to deep dive into the results of the test, seeing the particular report of failures and successes. And it's all available through Connect API as well. So you can build it in into your pipeline of your release as ISV partner. Uh, you don't need to rely on a, on a SFDX CLI all the time. So it's exposing the REST API. And with that, I just want to show a quick demo. <coughs> and it's all pre-recorded, so it will go smooth. Uh, and we're going to start. We want to start with a uh, ha. Or they say, right? It's going to go smooth. We're going to start with a run command. So uh, as you probably used SFDX CLI before, uh, there's a new set of commands called force package hammer test. And we're going to run a command called run. So this is a command will trigger the hammer test. And let's take a look at the help first. So the, the biggest thing there is a package version ID. So as an ISV, you can specify your package version of a new package that you want to test. So and uh, on top of that, there are things like subscriber orgs, or you can specify them as a list or as a set of as a set of in the file. So if we want to run it, we first of all we want to specify target user in your org. Then we can specify, and in this case it's dhammer demo some 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 users that recorded. Uh, then you can specify the package version ID, uh, and that's a version. Let's say you just release a new package that you want to test. So you can specify a version. You can find it in, in the packaging. And then you specify the list of subscribers where you want to execute it. Um, you can, ag again, it's a comma separated list, as I mentioned. So we're going to put it in uh, two different orgs today. And uh, on top of that, we can say we want to run Apex test after the uh, package is uh, executed. So we're going to run Apex test as a part of that package. And uh, let's see. And we're getting back a results with a request ID that we want to save because we want to check the progress. Uh, it does not happen instantly because we need to spin up that copy of the org uh, in, a separate, in a separate instance. So we get a request ID that we can go and check later using our list or report command. And let's take a look at the list command now. So the list command would allow you to see results of all the requests that you previously submitted. So over 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 the over the course of time, and of course you can you can filter them, and if you take a look at the help doc for this command, you're gonna see that it allows you to specify package version ID. So the package version ID is a is a, is, a, is an attribute that you can use to filter results specific to a particular version of the package that you're testing right now. So this is all that ISVs can do today. So let's let's take a look again. We need to specify a target user in order to run that command. And we want to want to get the results for a particular package that we might have tested previously. And uh, the package version uh, would again it will tell you all the results if you if you submitted the hundreds of tests against uh, many subscribers, it would return all of the results back. So you can see that uh, you can see a status of those requests. Some of them are with errors, meaning that failed. Some of them just initiated. Some of them already completed. So maybe you want to dig into those that uh, failed or those that completed to make sure it works. And you can do that with a report command. So same way, uh, it's uh, SFDX force package hammer test report. And we can deep dive help to see how we can use that command. So we, we need to supply a request ID. And as I mentioned, you can find the request ID when you submit request or when you run a list command. So now let's do let's do take a look into one of those tests that we executed previously. And again, it might take hours depending on the size of the org because it's while it's a metadata only copy, it still takes time to uh, to spin up that org. So it's pretty much like a dev org dev dev sandbox. So on here we have a request ID that we want to check. And we see that for that, we run that request against two different subscribers. And both requests failed 
Uh, one failed because there are some Apex test failures. So we executed tests after our package install, and we found that something is not working. So this might be might trigger a conversation between ISV and subscriber. And we have the second package, uh, package request that failed because there was some problem during the actual upgrade. And it gives you the same type of information that if you would receive while you're pushing an upgrade to a subscriber. Um, again, all of those things would, 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 let you would help you to have those conversations with your subscribers or for your ISVs to have a conversations with you so everything runs smoothly when, 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 when a new package version coming out. And uh, for a success type of packages, you would see that it would tell that your package hammer completed. This would indicate that the process of testing it has completed, and you can see the result is passed, meaning that everything went smooth, and it's probably safe to go and push that upgrade to your subscriber. <coughs> With that, uh, so a little bit about our roadmap. Uh, we're currently in pilot in summer 19. We have few ISVs already testing it out. Pilot means that uh, both parties need to sign a pilot agreement. So don't worry yet. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you unlikely will be part of it unless your ISV would reach out to you. And if you're an ISV, you, will need, you, you can still test things using your own internal subscriber works. Or maybe you have a good business relation with one of those subscribers that you want to get involved into the pilot. So you can reach out to them and they can get into the pilot program as well. We're planning to go beta testing in winter release, uh, the Dreamforce release, uh, with, uh, with options for subscribers to completely opt out from this process, because we understand that at first it might sound scary uh, for some of them. So we're going to provide all of those options, and we will provide more information on how those things are getting executed. Uh, just if you, if, I, if we got you interested, uh, you can check out the release notes for summer. Uh, just search for SV Hammer Summer 19. This is the only one article about it on the release notes. There is also a Trailblazer group. It's pretty empty right now. There, I just created it. So there's zero members. If you're interested, you can join. Uh, we're gonna share some videos. We're gonna share some uh, additional information there as well, as well as you can continuously ask questions. Uh, me and uh, other team members are gonna closely monitor the group for feedback for any concerns and questions that you might have in a, as an ISV or a partner. And there's another blog post written uh, probably like five years ago by Josh Kaplan about the nature of hammer testing. So this was the first time we talked about um, hammer tests back then. And uh, if the demo that I showed you to you looks scary, uh, I invite everyone to check uh, trail, Trailhead module for CLI. Uh, it's pretty cool and uh, straightforward, and it would be useful not only for ISV Hammer purposes, but any sort of development practices that you might do at Salesforce. Um, and with that, we have a couple minutes for Q&A, and I think it will be easier for us just to step back of the stage. And if you want to meet us there and ask your questions, um, please do. And thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Okay.